We're back. We're live on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Trump Week. Every Wednesday, we do this at 11 o'clock, and we are happy to do it this week because there are so many things worthy of discussion. Uh, so on the show today, we have uh, Tim Apicella, my co-host, uh, Stephanie Dalton uh, at home, and uh, Winston Welsh at home. We're all at home, as a matter of fact. We're doing, we're doing the right thing by social distancing. So this was a really interesting week, a revealing week, if you will, uh, to see what we really got in our president in a time of, you know, unadulterated crisis. Tim, what comes to mind at first? Well, all the press conferences and all the ups and downs of our commander in chief, one minute being serious about the Corona-19 virus and then being completely flippant and, and, and not serious. And then, you know, the recent developments of basically um, making false comparisons of a normal flu and the deaths that are incurred with a normal flu and car accidents and the death that's incurred nationwide with car accidents and trying to then tie in the Corona-19 mitigation or the, the clampdowns of the economy and saying, well, there's except basically he's implying there's acceptable losses with the Corona-19 19, 19, uh, deaths so that we don't tank the economy. And I found that uh, really jaw-dropping and I just really couldn't believe what I heard. Yeah, and other people have, uh, have copied him, you know, some of his uh, Trumpers have, have copied him. And my favorite one was a guy named Patrick. Patrick is the lieutenant governor of the state of Texas. And he said, you know, these, these uh, old people, um, you know, uh, why, why don't they sacrifice themselves on the altar of the stock market? <clears throat> It'll be easier for us if they just mm, die and go away. I thought that was really interesting, and it's an extension of, of what uh, Trump was saying inter alia. Uh, so, uh, Stephanie, what comes to mind for you? Well, I find, I find that so um, off-putting, I, I, I mean, hardly presidential. So once again, I think, you know, his advisors must make mighty efforts, but they're not very successful at keeping him presidential, or much less on script. So um, it just shows that his priorities and notions for where we're going in this crisis have nothing to do with all of us. They have all to do with what's going to be in his best interest and um, uh, entertaining those kinds of really extreme uh, um, suggestions or recommendations, I think, is uh, just a revealing uh, little opening to see where he really is. So it's sad after all his experience for these three years, and there have been some things to his credit, he's still not overcoming um, the challenge of how to be presidential and how to lead and how to unite and how to help us solve this dreadful crisis. My favorite part of one of those um, those conferences where is for the second half of the conference, about an hour long, uh, he launched into a discussion of his own altruism and how he was a billionaire many times over. And he was uh, providing, you know, um, service to the country um, and they should everybody should appreciate uh, how much he's doing for the country. He, he's doing this for the benefit of the country. I actually almost lost my meal at that point in time. But he went on for like half an hour. Uh, and, and I said, this is not the issue. The issue is not Trump. The issue is people dying from coronavirus. We're in a crisis. Uh, he, he doesn't see a crisis. Um, he sees a, a campaign rally, which he can't have actually with people you know, in a, in a big room or a big campaign rally. Um, so he tries to do it in these conferences. Winston, what about you? I'm sure you had some sharp response to some of the things he's been doing this week. Well, you know, as you know, I, I am uh, completely dismayed as are half of the people in this country, and maybe more, uh, with this the, the, the whole presidency. It's a, a, a crushing blow to who we are as Americans. But um, maybe more concerning to me is that the approval ratings of this president are at an all-time high. They're matching his all-time high. So it either tells me that people we've had such a disconnect between what is presidential and what is not and and that the fact that that his rants and um lies and misinformation on a daily basis which are are can be quite dangerous and not and not just in the time of COVID, but in general to our nation 
uh, the fact that this is passing as presidential and as um, authoritative is, is really scary. Um, we have an educational, spiritual, moral um, crisis of the first order in this nation, and it's evident by those um, by those results. And I realize people do want to support their leaders. We do want to support our leaders, but we don't have the leader that we can uh, that, that, that's commanding support right now. We have a lot of other people, though, that have stepped up to leadership in uh, state governors, um, Inslee and Cuomo and uh, uh, the great state of California, uh, 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 Governor Newsom. We have even in Hawaii here where uh, our own mayor and, and governor have worked together to um, get a uh, quarantine up and, and treat this as a serious threat. So uh, companies are stepping up, nonprofits are stepping up, people are stepping up and they're realizing we have to bypass the information that we're getting right now and try and suss through the truth. And we need media to do it. We need this show to do it. We need uh, a lot of people to step up and do that. And they are doing that. So again, my faith in America is uh, is constantly renewed despite uh, the battering that it takes sometimes by people who purport to represent the best values of America. You know, Winston, it was, um, gee, I forget who wrote the piece, but uh, there was a piece this week about um, how Trump, oh yes, it was a, a Daily Coast, KOS, right? Um, and they were uh, they created a petition uh, for you to sign if you felt uh, that Trump that the networks should not carry uh, these press conferences that Trump does live. They should comment on them afterward, but not carry them live because they're too confusing, too authoritative, and therefore confusing when he lies. Uh, would you sign a petition like that? You know, what's the petition going to do? You either know that they're lies or not. And the people that have drank the, the deep orange Kool-Aid, and uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to just disperse Kool-Aid, but they, it's a religious belief. It's a, like a cult, but they, they believe that he is absolutely right. He um, demands our, our obedience and um, I don't want to say our worship, but, but certainly that he's right. Signing a petition is meaningless. Who's going to read it? Who's going to uh, listen to it? I, I, I don't put much stock in that. They've been signing that uh, saying sign this thing since day one and it won't make a difference people tune in half the time i think just to see what outrageous thing he's going to say and the other half just to say oh well he said this so therefore it must be true um because he does he speaks the gospel truth so i, I don't put any stock in that i think any person in this country who wants the real news uh has to has to search for it. you've got to look it doesn't mean that you need to uh, I'm not saying the, the media is not true. There are different um, opinions out there, and you need to go through that yourself and do some some soul searching and see what seems right uh, for you. Uh, but certainly, uh, without that, whatever's coming out, the, the documented lies that we see on a daily basis are not the truth. The other truth that we need to find out around that is up to each of us, individually and collectively as well, to uh, discover. You know, Tim, to, to demonstrate the depravity of the ignorance out there, I want to mention uh, that, you know, you and I did a show which was entitled uh, uh, Question um, is, uh, is Coronavirus a Hoax? Okay. And uh, now Trump was saying that uh, early on, you know, before he admitted that it was a serious problem. It was not that long ago, actually. It was when he first started talking about the coronavirus uh, epidemic, later pandemic. Um, but we get responses, we get comments on YouTube when we post our shows. And um, I told you that on this show, and maybe you've seen yourself, on this show where we, where we ask that question, we have gotten an enormous number of comments. And I would say more than half of them are from people who actually today, now, think that Trump was right when he said it was a hoax. Um, it was just really chilling they're still locked on to what he was saying before. Talk about blind following. They remember what he was saying before. He's changed his tune since then, but they're still agreeing with what he said before, that it is a hoax. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction is exactly what Winston said, and that uh, there is a anywhere from 38% to 40% that have drinking the orange Kool-Aid doesn't matter what he says. They believe whatever he says, whatever he does, and they believe it's the right thing. Bottom line is, um, whatever he says at these press conferences, they now have to say, okay, 
That's what I believe, particularly when now he's being a little bit more serious about the virus. Some of them are begrudgingly starting to follow those words. But if you looked at all those comments, and I think we got over 75, 80 comments, and I would say, I, I disagree. I think we had well over 80, 90% saying that, yes, the coronavirus 19 is definitely a hoax. And what do you say to that? I, you know, low information voters, um, I don't know how you want to classify them, but the bottom line is uh, it's, it's really unbelievable. And then, you know, we have a wartime president, quote unquote, wartime president, who's acting less than a wartime president. He's acting quite petty in a lot of instances. Um, if I might just cite one example, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but I saw a quid pro quo taking place yesterday's interview with Fox, um, Fox interview in the Rose Garden. And I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but he said, um, uh, referring to Cuomo in New York, is that they have to treat us well also. They can't just say, gee, we'd like, we should get that or we should get this. Um, it almost like he was dangling support and assistance to New York if they weren't respectful and, and nice to Donald Trump. If they weren't, I, I saw it as if they weren't um, singing the praises of Donald Trump, he may or may not render assistance from the federal government. And, and so, and I'm sure that there's many of his followers saying, yeah, that's a great idea. If they're not respectful to you and, and, and kiss your toes and your feet, then withhold, withhold all support. Yeah, you're not the only one who found a quid pro quo there. That was easy to find in what he said. And in fact, I've seen a couple of articles for the same proposition using that term that he was demanding a quid pro quo from Cuomo. Uh, really amazing. And I, I thought <clears throat> Cuomo was, you know, it was accurate. He wasn't necessarily criticizing Trump. He was criticizing the, the federal response. And, and Stephanie, what about the federal response? Can we drill down a little? What, what has the response been in terms of supporting people, supporting the doctors, the hospitals, the people who are sick? Uh, what, what is the response in providing needed equipment, critically needed equipment and, and supplies and, uh, and testing equipment? Um, how, would you, how would you rate? Uh, well, first, tell us what has Trump actually done and how would you rate his efforts? Well, I must say I rate them very lowly that here there's no response. He refuses to take the recommendations to enact that production uh, act that comes out of the uh, 50s and has been used many times by other leaders to redirect the manufacturing a process in, in the country to make the airplanes that you need to go take on the Germans or whatever it is. But um, that has, has been uh, very painful to listen to the pleas and, and the importuning of the medical people who don't have any of their clothing that they need to go in and be protected and they're getting sick. So we're facing a further prospect of disaster as when these people in the medical profession who are willing to risk themselves as they're getting sick, they're dropping out, and we have less people to take care of the people who are increasingly sick. So I, I think it's so um, short, short um, minded. He's just not thinking about how this is um, something that's going to come back on him. So I think that the, those and that that plea from the medical community is across all media and how that can be ignored is beyond my understanding. And I think the American public is aware of that. Um, so as far as his response, it's been pitiful and scary. And uh, uh, we're gonna see things get a lot worse because of it. But I think that um, he's, as Tim was saying, I believe that he's already practiced quid pro quo with California. He's done a lot of that with California. So they weren't even supposed to get any disaster funding or FEMA from previous disasters. Remember the fires and earthquakes? So um, he's trying to withhold um, support for things he doesn't like there. And unless they play ball with him, he's not going to support them. Well, now I think there's some other uh, forces um, at work. But I think the question is, what is the federal government supposed to be? States are the um, powerhouse for each one. Each one of them has its own status as a state. I mean, we went to war over states' rights, rights in the Civil War. States are powerful in their own right. 
and the federal government and the states together create a bigger prospect of unity and support and safety. So the Fed is there to be a, a promoter of states' rights and a facilitator of having them meet their, their goals, which is the best prospect for the nation and builds our unity. So uh, there's some real confusion and, and tension that wasn't, I don't think, intended to be there in this arrangement we have of the United States of America. You know, uh, Winston, so, this is a kind of new federalism. Uh, you know, in, in the old tension between the federal government taking action and this leaving it to the states. It goes back to the Constitution, but the Republicans over the past decade or two, you know, have really focused on that. And their idea is the federal government should do as little as possible and lay it off on someone else on the states. And that seems to be what Trump has done. Uh, he's saying to the governors, you do it. You take care of it. You order the ventilators. You order the supplies. I, I'm really not going to help you. And I'm not going to you know, uh, really activate the Defense Production Act because I, I, want, I want people to come to me, uh, companies to come to me and, uh, and offer their services. Uh, but I'm not going to take affirmative action on this. The whole thing sounds like a politician setting things up so that he can take credit for success and deny responsibility lay it off on someone else if there's a failure. What do you think about this new federalism we are seeing on an issue that's so critical to the country? Well, I well mean, can I just well, say that, Pen I'm just gonna say Pence is not there anymore. He's coming on and doing all of these things himself instead of using the people he appointed to move this initiative forward. So that is very confusing. And a lot of those experts are not there anymore, including Dr. Fauci. So he's at the center of all of this and taking the lead on everything. And exactly as you say, it's he's trying to get the credit for anything and, and also requires people to come directly to him. It's I didn't I'm very interested in the tutors, as I'm sure you all are, but I had no idea I was gonna get to have an experience of living under Henry VIII as we seem to be having now, speaking of how the federal <laughs> system works. So. Winston? Uh, well, you know, I, I, Donald Trump is a master politician. He, uh, he's He has his finger on the pulse of America. And I certainly don't mean to disparage half of our, the people in our nation who are good folks, they're people, they're friends, they're our family, they're our co-workers who fervently believe that that he, maybe he has warts, maybe he's ugly, but what he promotes is right. Fundamentally, whatever whatever that is. Um, and then the other half says, no, that's not the America that, that I believe in or that we believe in. And this has really been happening probably, I don't know if it ever stopped happening since the Civil War, honestly. Uh, it's more genteel now. And uh, you, you know, you could see this in an issue like uh, e easy things and, uh, like, uh, right not to be fired from your job or uh, denied housing if, if you're gay or lesbian. Half the states have protections, half the states don't. It's been 10 years since any state adopted protections. Uh, the last uh, it's 10 years, they decided this 10 years ago, basically. Virginia just decided this year to join the states that have protections. First Southern state to do it. It's not a sea change, but it just lets you know the states pretty much have already decided this, where you live, who you associate with, um, what you believe, what your media source is. We've already become uh, a, a new federalized system, whether we like it or not. Maybe it's, it's um, I don't know, maybe out of this, we're gonna be, have something that's more, uh, we'll, we'll develop more robust systems so that such that if this is gonna be the new order, then we need to have re uh, resilience built in. Maybe it's the, the uh, Western states joined together uh, uh, or the, the Southern states or the, the middle states in more compacts of, a uh, stronger association like the old uh, AT&T was so that if the federal government's not going to start, they don't believe in these certain rights for people or if they're not going to respond in certain ways or they want to have laws that are more akin to the people that, refl that, that reflect the people that uh, are there. Maybe it is, it's already gone that way and we're just wallpapering it over. I don't know, but um, it seems like there's a lot of fighting that says, no, you have to believe this. And the other half, half says, no, you have to believe that. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of happy compromise in between. But I mean, I'd like to think that fundamental rights and, um, and responsibilities of, of citizens are guaranteed across this land. Uh, and it doesn't always seem to be that way. And, uh, and yet we're moving towards a more perfect union. And that may be that uh, we have 
some better ideas percolating at the top that, that I don't know. I don't I don't have the answers, but certainly a lot of questions and answers will be uh, given in the next six months, a year, and forever, forever more um, after this uh, crisis dies down. You're a very kind person, Winston. I must say. Um, you know, the, the reality though is that the federal government has um, abdicated its role, in my view, uh, on the on the on the crisis. It, yes, has, it, it hasn't has. done. I mean, if we here had a few minutes to decide what we would do as president, it would be completely different than what he's Absolutely. been doing, than what he's done and doing. So Absolutely. Um, you know, he's abdicated and he's he's laid it in the in the hands of the states, but then he hasn't funded the states, which actually takes takes us to the probably the biggest issue to discuss. Okay. And we only have a few minutes to discuss it. And that is uh, the bill that uh, Trump is involved in, the Republicans are involved in, which apparently uh, has just today passed the House and Senate and is now the law, a bill of over $2 trillion. And the tension, which took 10 days to resolve, was the Republicans wanted to give it all to business and to this, you know, this, this discretionary fund um, under the control of Mnuchin. Um, and the Democrats wanted to give it to the people, the working stiffs around the country, uh, to save them from a recession that would be very personal and disastrous for millions and millions and millions of people. So, my, I, Tim, why don't you lead off? What happened here? Uh, why did we get into this tension? What is wrong with Mudville that we should pose life against Wall Street? I think we learned a lesson from the uh, tax cut the tax break to the corporations. And mm -hmm. as much as I don't like to give Donald Trump credit, I'm going to give him some kudos on the following. He said, I don't want to see the corporations do a buyback of their stock. I don't want to see that at all. And that was a good thing for him to say. And I think that was the basis of why the Republicans couldn't exactly get exactly what they wanted. And that was um, big tax breaks, payroll cuts, uh, you name it, uh, taking care of corporate America and taking care of the 1%. And I think this bill does hammer out and does serve um, taking care of the larger corporations, but also small businesses, direct tax relief to uh, you know everyone who's affected by this virus shutdown. And it's not the best, it's not even close to the best bill, but I think it's, there's a compromise here. And I think if you look at the details of this $2 trillion bailout, um, there's something for everybody. Ah, okay, Stephanie, what do you think about the bill? <clears throat> what do you what do you think about the effects of spending two trillion, two plus trillion dollars uh, in an economy, you know, from ultimately tax receipts in an economy which is on its back? Uh, how's that going to work out? And do you agree with it on a moral level? <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, that the final um, out the outcome is more moral and more addressing uh, needs than than um, anything that was proposed previously. So I think that um, we may have something that has um, stimulated um, the certainly the the economy. Some it seems to be there's signs of some appeasing the stock market issues because it has uh, value. Uh, for those who need who who require uh, more help, um, I think that um, it it hasn't really solved anybody's problem because we're increasing the deficit and we're going to have to end up paying all of this back. But but on the moral side of it, it does it does put people's feet to the fire as to how it is that they're going to uh, pump back into the the levers that are going to bring us back to normal again. So if, those, yeah. if that ends up less than what we did with the TARP and all of that during the financial crisis, everybody understands there were some mistakes made, but that was a crisis situation and, and that, that we can do that better. And hopefully what the outcome is, is that it's better. But I think that Winston's point about the lack of leadership at the, uh, we just have no leadership. So we look to this bill and its prospects and its power to influence and um, and and change the direction of our economy and then the the, the, the the desperate status of the people in the nation and especially the medical community, as we said before. So um, we're looking to those kinds of things alone. We have to use that to make to bring us back together 
And I think that that is really pitiful when you think of the leaders we've had in the past in these crises that really transformed the nation's way of feeling and thinking about our status and how we're going forward. So um, it, it's very, we're, we're operating under such a huge deficit, even though we have two trillion. Hey, how good is that? That's great. But the, we have no leadership to bump that two trillion into something that can, converts our minds and, and our, our hopes. So in you that know, regard, go ahead. Well, I, I just wanted to bring up quickly that I think there's some paradigms going on here. Paradigms. In other words, people are so confused. There's no nothing to grasp. And so some people like what was said before with the sectionalities in the country. Yes, they're those that are coalescing, but also people have paradigms. So that the cult paradigm for Trump, what else is there? That's what pulls, it, pulls them together. And our paradigm that's... Uh, um, emerging having to do with Biden, which has been, which has made me think about this, which has been so enormously um, amazing in that everybody is kind of following the lead of South Carolina. And well, that's true. That, that, you know, Winston, doesn't this, this give you, doesn't this trouble you in some way? I mean, there's two trillion reasons uh, for abuse. There's two trillion reasons for corruption. And I, you know, I suppose instead of spending a week on fine tuning exactly who is going to get what in, you know, in the working man section, working woman section, um, they spent 10 days uh, arguing about how they would control Trump and stop him from putting it into Miralago, which was a real concern by the Democrats. That's what they were arguing about, the control on the discretionary fund. And I'm not sure they actually handled that. I'm not sure they actually handled the, the problem of who do you give what to be equitable. So we have here a bill that was done with, with very little drill down, you know, attention to detail. Um, do you think this is going to work? Uh, and do you think it's going to work for the economy going forward? It is a huge amount of money and it's a huge bill to pay back. Uh, what are your thoughts about the way this ended up, Winston? Boy, it, it better work. I'll just say that. You know, people are hurting out there. This is an unprecedented economic crisis, if nothing else. Uh, which is why, you know, you hear these musings that we're going to start the economy on Easter. I don't think so. It's not going to happen as far as I can tell. But, you know, uh, this the administration has been a hallmark of really corruption. And uh, this does not, nothing like that surprises me. Uh, who cares? If we, if, give him the money to buy Mar-a-Lago. If it helps, it's already going there anyway on some level. He's telling people to stay in his hotels. There's been no separation of his funds. I'm not worried about that. I want to see these these people, especially the 55 million Americans who are, um, you know, independently employed. They need relief. This is just not for people who are, you know, working in the for, for a corporation. We need it across uh, the board. And it's interesting. Politico had an interesting article saying about that Donald Trump is exactly the president we need because he's not a, not a budgetary uh, hawk on this. That, that, you know, these ideas that were dismissed as lunacy a month ago, like Andrew Yang's giving a universal income or, uh, you know, handing out, uh, you know, e even to the point where probably universal health care will come in and then Donald Trump can claim it as his own and say, this is the good for the people because he is a master politician. So if it means spending two trillion or four trillion or probably what I read today, six trillion, you know what, in the end, people don't care. They don't care because it's just money. It's going to be some inflation down the road. Um, we've been, we haven't cared for a long time how much money we're spending, where we're spending it, or uh, you know, how we're spending it. So adding a little bit right now or a lot of it, actually this time it's needed. And if it makes a difference and gets people um, to pay their rent, to buy food, uh, to pay for medicine, and then possibly some more down the road to, to uh, restart things, Obviously, a lot of it's going to go to corporations. A lot of it's going to be corruptions and, and political payback. That is that is uh, absolutely going to be the case in any one of these government handouts. It doesn't matter what administration it's under. This one's just going to be more egregious uh, than yeah. in the past. But yeah. I'm all for it. To get whatever we need to do to help people out right now, the, every man and uh, every woman um, on the street out there. So we, there's going to be a lot more to come where this came from. Thank you, Winston. Um, so, Tim, uh, you have the uh, unenviable task of summarizing and predicting what's going to happen till next week. 
prediction. Look for Dr. Anthony Fauci to hold his head once again on, on front of the podium in disbelief as Donald Trump pontificates about the coronavirus and his self-perceived reality of what the virus is and how to cure it. That's one prediction. Number two is just realize that this um, economic relief is a drop in the bucket for all those many millions of people who are not working and the amount of checks they're gonna get in the next month or two is a drop in the bucket. So prediction, we are going into a deep recession as a result of this coronavirus. No two ways about it. I know the stock market's jumping up a thousand here and a thousand there, but when the death toll starts to ring in and people really go into a, 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 you know, a very fearful mode, um, the economy is to produce that which it needs to produce. That's jobs and uh, revenue for, for America. That's my prediction. Okay, well, that's uh, all happy news, but the, the story is, is this guy's going to go shopping for groceries, and he's told he, he'd better wear, um, you know, a, a, a mask and uh, gloves when he goes, and um, he, he comes back and he says, you know, you lied to me, you lied to me. Uh, they, uh, um, I wore the mask and gloves, but uh, they told me I should wear clothing, too. <laughs> it's I, everybody else. <laughs> I tried. I, I, I didn't do a very good job at that. Anyway, thank you very much, you guys. Timing's everything, Jay. Timing is everything. Hey, thank you. Hey, Jay. I'll leave you with one thing. Stephanie. Shakas, yes, not shakes. Thing. Shakas, not shakes. So in the future, this can be our universal symbol of how you doing. No more All right. of this. All right, you guys. Wait. Oh, good. Next That's week good. for Trump Week, and if you if you if you wait a little bit. But we'll start our show on coronavirus, Corona Watch. Thank you all. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank, Thank you, you, Winston. Jay. Aloha. Thank you, Jay. Aloha.